Hello, this is Brad from Survival Comms, and yes, just what I need, another marine direction finding radio. But what we have on the bench today is a Newmar Nav 121 marine direction finding radio. You can see the link up there above, and the card will tell you if you choose where I talk about how you use one of these particular receivers. But we'll talk about this receiver in general. This receiver is an AM only, does not pick up FM broadcast band. It does, however, have a digital frequency readout instead of having the scale that most people are used to. You also can move your loop antenna with a knob, which is nice. And there's some issues with it. You can see the volume control potentiometer seems to be loose in here. And it looks like our tuning movement has got some kind of a bend in it. I haven't opened it up yet, and we'll open this up together and look at it. Power is supplied by D-cell batteries. The D-cell batteries are retained in this tube right here. It takes four D-cells to power it, and there is no provision for running this on 12-volt power that I have seen anywhere in it. It's got a carrying handle on it. Okay, looking at the bottom side of the set here, we can see it's got its feet to support it. You know, the housing and the chassis and everything is made of metal, and it's a of an aluminum construction and it's it's fairly thick so you know considering these things were used to, or meant to be used aboard ship they're ruggedized especially in comparison to more contemporary products uh, this particular radio is like a late 80s vintage and it's also marked as made in Japan but at this point here I have no information about it at all so let's take this thing apart and see what makes it tick okay I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that the batteries are removed Batteries are removed, and we're going to go ahead and remove these four screws that hold the housing to the chassis itself, and just a number two Phillips is the tool we're going to use for that. After we've removed our four screws that secure the housing to the chassis, what we're going to go ahead and do is lift this off of there, which is pretty simple. We just kind of manipulate it off of here. and we set that aside within the limits of the cable itself. When you get on the board here, you can see that we can uncouple the housing with this plug right here, and this basically disconnects the antennas. Just pulling that plug out right there. And if we look in front, we have a second plug here, and this disconnects our speaker and our power. So we'll go ahead and lift that out of here too. Okay, now that we've got our plugs disconnected, we can separate the chassis from the housing itself. And we can see here that our speaker, and here's an 8-ohm 2-watt speaker, and it's in good repair. There's no perforations in the cone of the speaker. And we can see that our insulators are in place for our vertical antenna, and that our drive mechanism. But, if you look here, there's a small rubber grommet that used to insulate the antenna itself and that is busted off at some point in the past so we're going to end up having to replace that pretty sure I don't have one on hand that particular size so what I may end up doing is is just insulating the vertical portion of the antenna itself with some heat shrink tubing to provide electrical insulation from the housing itself and looking inside the chassis, we can see the chassis is very clean. Uh, it's really good. You have a door at the bottom that allows you to do, it looks like your wiring. If you can look underneath there, and you can see you can access that from that panel there. And these screws were just your, to hold your standoffs to hold everything together. And these other screws here are what ties the tuning capacitor. Tuning capacitor looks to be good. The problem is I believe this shaft right here is bent, so we're going to try to see if we can repair that. And our volume control potentiometer, we can see that's just loose in there. We can tighten that up and straighten that out. We'll go ahead and see about repairing our loose volume control knob. Now we're going to go ahead and remove our face plate after removing the knobs. 
Then our plate comes off just like this. And you can see we have our light control here. Now we're going to carefully remove our phone jack or earphone. Slide it out. And now we have our face plate removed and we can clean this up. Remember, you don't want to use anything on this that's a stronger solution than what you would use on your own skin. Now we can go ahead, everything's exposed, we can tighten up our volume control potentiometer by holding on to the potentiometer and tightening it up with a wrench carefully. And remember, snug is tight. And while we've got this apart, we're going to go ahead and just make sure everything else is tight on all the other controls. Okay, now we can see our tuning shaft here, and you can see how bent that is. You can see. So we're going to have to remove that and attempt to straighten that out. All right, this is the tuning movement here. You can see that our shaft is right here, and we've just got a half hitch around it. And it runs to this knob that drives this capacitor. So we're going to go ahead and straighten that out. And the way I do that is, is by using a, a hook, such as this, and getting into that spring, and then capturing that spring with a hemostat. Well, try to capture it with a hemostat. But now we've detensioned our tuning drive. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and loosen the shaft and remove it. Should be a 7 16 And you can see right there, we've got quite a quite a bend there, don't we? See how we can do that without fracturing this shaft. Okay, the way I'm going to attempt to straighten this out is, is I've got this aluminum vise, and I have this thing chucked up in here in a piece of uh, leather to protect it. And what I'm going to do is, is use a small hammer. And all we're doing is, is taking a hammer and just tapping it. Just like that. And like the proverbial bent push rod, it's going to be awful hard to uh, get this perfect again, but you can see we've got most of our bend out of it now. Okay, now that we're done with that, we can see with the knob here that it's not absolutely flawless when I straighten out that shaft. However, it's much better and much less bent than it was before. I've replaced the tuning string. You can see the original string here is worn through the kern and all that was left was the mantle and this was going back and forth and over time this was going to break and I would end up having to get back in the radio again so normally you want to always use tuning string uh, you can get these strings from antique radio repair places and buy a spool of it uh, in this case here I didn't have any on hand and I didn't feel like uh, cannibalizing it from the tuning drive for the antenna so what I did was is I went ahead and used micro cord similar to this except it's larger in diameter of course but all you do is essentially is take yourself a big enough piece to make both ends to make your loop and some knots it's always better to go above board than under. Make your cut. You're going to make a simple fisherman knot is all you're going to do. So just take your two ends of your string, cross them over one another, run it around, over, then back through that loop you made. like that and you can see it just basically ties one overhand knot over top of the string itself and what you can do is is you can move this one back and forth 
you get your adjustment correct for your tuning loop and try to get them to where they're almost the same exact length tighten it up and that's pretty doggone close right there and then what you do is at the opposite side do the same knot again just an overhand knot over top you have your tuning string match up the length once you get your length set cut it short sear your ends and take your spring hook the spring the one loop of it around here and then just go ahead and string your tuning movement as it originally came off now what we're going to do is use some contact cleaner and make sure you use like tuner spray which has got a certain amount of lubricant in it and not just generic contact cleaner generic contact cleaner eats plastic so you never want to use it in something like this you can see all these switches are sealed, so we really can't get in those switches to clean them, and they all seem to be functioning correctly. The only one that wasn't was the power switch, which is on the volume control knob. And what we do is, is just put a little tiny bit of tuner spray in there. And a little bit into this gain control and attenuator. and exercise the controls and now you can hear that switch and that positive stop by tightening that up that allowed us to be able to exert enough torque on that knob to actually turn it on and off so now that's straightened out work those controls back and forth get all the grunginess off of here and what we're going to do is we're going to clean out all this stuff here before we put it back together again now what I've done is I've cleaned up that front of where the uh, faceplate goes and inside the chassis itself with Q-tips and generally a good low tox cleaner I use is just a screen cleaner plate and if you look right here there's aluminum standoff spacers that go between the faceplate and the chassis and this one being at the bottom in the center is going to be kind of difficult to get in there so what I'm going to try to do is is attempt to rotate this back while maintaining alignment that spacer and driving that screw back in and let's see the rest of them will be pretty easy okay And it looks like we got a winner. Now the rest of our spacers, we're just going to use our precision tweezers and hold these in place. All right, let's light this thing up here. Install a battery in it. The battery just go in this tube. It's got this nice little door. A latch on it. Fire it up. Turn the attenuator on. You can see we turn down our power. This is like the middle position is just standard receive. This is turning the gain up and this is turning the attenuator on. Volume control self-explanatory. The wheat lamp lights up in here for the backlight. It's not really super bright, but you can see it in there. Beat frequency oscillator works. Got the broadcast band. Got a lot of noise here, of course, inside. Attention, so that means now we're in the 401k retirement world. 
when should we start withdrawing money from our That's all going to be, you know, be dependent on a few things, Mark. How old are you? I am pleased to be able to add this to my collection and this is an excellent example of a commercial quality marine direction finding radio of its vintage and again I'm very glad to be able to add it to my collection. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Cobbs. Till next time.